The 2017 Atlantic hurricane season had a devastating impact on Puerto Rico. Hurricane Maria was particularly costly and deadly to the island. Describe the impact the systems had on Puerto Rico's election systems. Well, the impact of the Hurricane Maria was a devastating one. The effects of the hurricane completely destroyed numerous facilities and completely damaged the communication uh, capabilities that we had around the island. So it was a truly learning experience given the fact that there was no way for us to plan or organize to really uh, predict the level of impact and damage that Maria created. To me personally, after you know, living five hurricanes, this one was completely out of the charts. So the effects was catastrophic. The Puerto Rican State Election Commission headquarters and several of your satellite offices sustained substantial damage during the storm. How did your team work to mitigate the damage immediately following the disaster? Well, with uh, pure will and effort, uh, the, the cohesiveness of the team, we're able to get synchronized and go to the facilities that were most needed um, and the ones that were able to provide additional service to the community. The ones that were completely devastated, we were trying to clean them up uh, just so at least we could try to salvage whatever was, uh, was possible. The ones that actually had some type of capability uh, available, we made sure that we can make it, make it work, make sure that we could uh, have the community come back into those locations, receive some type of effort and aid, so they can start resuming their normal way of life and, uh, and helping the, the, the progress again in the island. Primero que nada, eh, Roberto y yo tuvimos que eh, comunicarnos con todo nuestro staff. First of all, we have to communicate with all the staff to be sure that they were okay because of the loss of communication, we were completely lost. Then, the first action that we take when we uh, came to the State Election Commission, the headquarter, was to review all the damage of the equipment. About 80% of the equipment do not suffer any damage, just the 20% of the equipment was damaged. What do you know now that you wish you knew when before Maria's landfall and the immediate aftermath of the storm? Well, we learned early on that no plan survives its first shot. And in this particular case, we were prepared in the sense that our redundant systems were uh, standing by. Um, our, the protection for equipment that could potentially get damaged due to water, or wind, or breakage in one of the facilities uh, was covered and protected. So we salvaged a lot of the equipment that way. Uh, so uh, past hurricanes help us plan correctly, but the level of catastrophe of that hurricane uh, really pushed it to the limit. The fact that the power was in such a devastated uh, fashion that didn't provide any ability to communicate or receive uh, energy for a long period of time. The, the amount of, uh, of uh, generators that were required in the island and the gasoline distribution required to keep people for three, four, five, six months, including us here in the facility, in the headquarters building, we were five months without uh, electric power from the, from the, from the uh, power plant. So we were surviving on generator, rationally, uh, rationing the, the diesel so we can have hours from either 7 a.m. or 7.30 uh, a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Uh, for us to be able to provide any type of service. Um, and you can think about how, how much of an impact that creates when, when you have to turn a whole bunch of servers on so you can start communicating with other people and then shutting them up again and then bringing them back up again and then requirement for AC so you don't you know, burn the system in the, in the process. So the, the level of additional preparation that I, I wish we had twice the amount of gas or twice the tanks because the, the, the extended uh, uh, delay for, for power to return uh, was um, significant. And, um, and that was something that we didn't prepare for. Today, over a year later, what progress has been made to rebuild Puerto Rico's election systems? And what still needs the island have to do before the 2020 elections? Oddly enough, the hurricane gave us an opportunity to really rebuild in a short period of time the, the infrastructure at a new level. Instead of shutting down all the systems and going on a hiatus for extended period of time, we took advantage 
the fact that the hurricane created so much devastation, we were not able to provide any services to upgrade them and use whatever we had available in that point in time to make them a little bit more resilient, a little bit more productive. So uh, in the aftermath of the hurricane, um, uh, we took advantage of that opportunity where, where the systems were being down so we can upgrade them. I will say that resources in the fact of training to be able to uh, uh, enhance the ability or, or, or improve the capability of uh, the products that the elections officials can use for the 2020 elections are, uh, are some of the resources that are, are, are necessary. You know, people are our most valuable asset, and when we invest in them and allow them to be uh, self-sufficient, and at the same time empowering them to be able to take the decisions that are necessary and the actions to provide a better service for the elections, the better that the entire community will, will provide. Partnerships and collaboration with all federal and state government agencies to communicate and get the help that we really need, including all the municipalities, and that we will ensure to reach all the recovery. That's what the most valuable learned lesson that we get from it. How will the Puerto Rican State Election Commission take the lessons learned from Maria and use them to improve the commission's responses to future disasters that should they occur? Well, we took everything that we learned um, one of the first things that we did in, uh, in, in the side of uh, technology was able to migrate everything that we had in on-premise and location into cloud-based type services. That kind of frees you from the, from the risk of losing those components when, when they are on site and you get hit like a, with a powerful storm like Maria was. So that was one of the main uh, advantages of, uh, of uh, uh, our progress post-Maria was able to say, like, listen, this is a good choice. We're going to be saving money. We're going to be saving um, resources. And at the same time, we're going to ensure that the resiliency of our system is, uh, is kept to be able to provide the services whenever they're necessary. What advice would you give to other election officials facing similar issues? First of all, learn from, from what happened. Um, create the adequate plan to address the fallout of a disaster like Maria, and then practice that effort or review it constantly. Because complacency tends to become a, uh, our own biggest enemy. And if we don't make sure that we continue to, to rehash the requirements of, of, of our improvements after an impact uh, such, as a, so such as a Hurricane Maria, then uh, we are bound to fail. So. Um, the, the continuous uh, practice and, 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 and uh, recognizing what will be necessary for a, for a hurricane like this or uh, an impact of such magnitude. Collaborate. Talk to the ones that have lived it. Uh, there's no, no, no better uh, learning opportunity than firsthand. Um, and if you attach yourself or you reach to the people that have experienced it and learn from those, you'll be able to be better prepared to address uh, similar circumstances.